Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer, you guys can go my channel. Welcome back to my channel, welcome to the start of another weekend vlog. Hello, happy Saturday. I'm here. I just woke up, <laughs> let's be real. I mean, I woke up like an hour ago, but I actually got out of bed like maybe 20 minutes ago. So, you know, a standard relaxing Saturday morning. Hi, <laughs> Saturday morning, AKA it is almost 1 p.m. because I have, I don't know. I just, I love laying in bed doing nothing on a morning you know what i mean anyways hi <sighs> welcome to the weekend i am so fucking tired from this week exhausted mentally just done so i need to do nothing today absolutely nothing oh i was supposed to go to book club tonight and i just don't even know if i can because i haven't read the book it's little fish by casey platt which i own i bought it for book club just don't know if i can i feel so disgusting today like truly <laughs> i just oh it's like the whole week just like slammed into me and it's not even like this week was like super busy i mean it kind of was i went to the new one con concert on tuesday back at teaching on monday and then yesterday i had a friend's housewarming to go to so i went to that and um i'm just so done oh and and thursday i had like lunch with with work. I think my hair is a good representation of how I'm feeling today because like it was washed and perfectly nice yesterday and I woke up and it was a mess and I was like oh so that's what that's what we're doing today all right. <laughs> it was a week. I am so mentally drained. I'm so tired. I need a break from life you know what I mean. So I'm gonna become one with my couch today. I'm gonna do some reading. I was even thinking about doing audiobook stuff but from the state of my voice like this is not the audiobook voice that I'm gonna use. <laughs> All right so let me tell you about what books I'm gonna be reading hopefully with at least the options of course because options are the best. I have of course this big boy an echo of things to come. I still have halfway to get. I'm on page 377 as I was last week last weekend haven't read anything. I also have The Broken Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin, which was on my TBR last weekend. I just didn't get to it, but I can get to it this weekend if I wanted. I also have a hankering to read The Empire of Exiles by Aaron M. Evans. So I think this is what I'm going to read this weekend. Because I got the audiobook for it. One of my credits on my many different audiobook apps. I also have Housemaid by Frieda McFadden that I'm kind of wanting to read. It's from the library. It's one of my holds that I didn't expect to come in because I was 22nd in line and then it came to me. I don't know if my library just has a million copies of this, but it came in and I was flabbergasted <laughs> because it was one of those moments where I was like, I have pushed all of my holds into April, like suspended them all into April for the ones that are like, you know, that I know I can suspend or need to suspend because it might accidentally come to me and I just don't have the space for it because I apparently, according to my app, I have 19 books out from the library right now and I just <laughs> don't have the mental space. For it. I'm staring at them because there's a pile on my fireplace and a pile on my piano. Everything is crazy, but it's, uh, this one, I just, I have no mental space for any more library books, my friends. So I pushed everything into April and then it is April. I pushed everything to the end of April or May. I think I need to go back in again and push it further because I just don't, I just need time to read my own books. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyways, this is also an option. So I have four options. I also have this one from the library as well, Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas that I did get the audiobook for through my library. So I could also read this one. I don't know. Because I did read one of the books off of my Translates TBR. When did I read that one? Was it this week? Yeah, I think it was this I think it was Tuesday. I needed something to distract me from the fact that I was going to the Noah Khan concert on Tuesday because my anxiety was really high that day because just like I was so excited to go to the concert and also so nervous to get myself there to get all my friends and to make sure we were on time and like everything was okay because I am the anxiety is a lot you know and so I was so anxious and I just I couldn't function at work I just I was having a really hard time so I was listening I it was like okay I have two books from my trans rights readathon TBR that I have not read and they were at the bottom of my possibilities if you saw my trans rights readathon vlog I did like a try chapter tag at the beginning of it and they were at the bottom of those possibilities and they were an unkindness of ghosts by River Solomon and and Lost in the Never Was by Aiden Thomas. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna give him a try and we'll see. Fully thinking I was gonna DNF an unkindness of ghosts going into it because I DNF'd River Solomon's previous book that I read, which was Sorrowland, is that what it's called? I'm not sure. I DNF'd that one last year because the, the prose just was 
not working for me and it just like it really didn't work for me so I was not expecting this one to work for me because the first chapter really I read it physically I really could not get into it so I had it audibly and I was like okay let me give this a try I started listening to it and I couldn't stop I read it all in five hours before the Noah Khan concert and I gave it four stars it was incredible it was very 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 good I was not expecting to love it that much like to really enjoy it like I was like okay this is just baffling to me how much I enjoy this so maybe I will enjoy the Lost in the Neverwoods as well on audio because the first chapter of that one physically didn't do it for me so that is also an option I have a lot of options and also I could read Little Fish by Casey Platt to go to book club tonight but I'm so exhausted and I don't want to be around people anymore so I think I'm just gonna not for today. I'm gonna read it eventually. And I hope my friends have a lovely time at book club. I just physically, I'm so tired and I just need to not be around people anymore. You know what I mean? I, it might be a very introverted thing to say, but that is what I'm saying today. <laughs> so, and the worst thing is my best friend from high school texted me yesterday and she's like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? And she doesn't live in the city. And anytime she asks me, what am I doing? I'm just like, you're in the city, aren't you? So I got home last night from my friend's housewarming and I texted her back and I was like, what's up? And she goes, oh, I was just wondering if you were busy this weekend. And I was like, I have a few things on. Why? And she's like, oh, I'm going to be bored in, in the city tomorrow night. And I was like, oh, I fucking, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't go to book club because I'm so tired. And I also can't like ditch book club and then go hang out with you, even though I would love to. I'm just so tired. So I'm so sorry, Cass, if you're watching this. I have book club, but I also am not going to book club because I'm just so done with this week. And I just need to become one with my couch and not speak to anybody. And so this weekend is going to be me trying to recharge a battery. And whether that battery is reading or just becoming one with my couch and playing Stardew for hours, we're going to find out. <laughs> I would love to get some audiobook stuff done, but my voice is not in audiobook shape right now. So we'll see if later I get the energy to and if my voice sorts itself out. I don't know why I haven't had this voice problem all week even after the Noah Khan concert I was fine like I had a slightly deeper voice but like it wasn't like scratchy ragged so I don't know what the fuck's going on anyways friends I hope you're ready for a weekend of relaxing Mexican relaxing I'm gonna see what I end up getting read this weekend I have a hankering to just power through some books definitely would love to get to the Empire of Exiles and I'm kind of feeling the housemaid as well for a difference in genre anyways also here look at this little guy I found at the dollar store He's a Snugs. Like, yeah, this is the tag that was on him. A snugs. So like a Squishmallow knockoff that I got from the dollar store because he feels exactly the same as a Squishmallow. I found him the day that I was going to Noah Khan concert and I was like, well, he's coming home with me because the aesthetic is exactly it. And his name is now Noah. Everyone meet Noah. Isn't he cute? He's such a cutie. Anyways, <laughs> I'm just slowly adding to my stuffed animal shrine. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Anyways, friends, I'm gonna make a coffee and see if that helps and eat something because it is now almost 1.30 and I've not eaten anything today. Wow, my sleep schedule is absolutely wrecked. Talk to you guys later, but welcome to the vlog. Because it's not like my anxiety was high. My anxiety has been good all day, but it's this lovely little brain stupidity that I go through where I'm just like, rationally, I know I should not be sitting here anymore because I'm so fucking tired. And I said that to myself and 
midnight. And then I just kept scrolling on TikTok and kept not doing anything. And I was like, well, if I'm going to sit here, I might as well start another book. I got a couple laying next to me. Did I? No. Oh, my fridge has made an entrance. Can you hear her? She's so noisy. <laughs> also, I accidentally bought strawberry jam. <laughs> I don't like strawberry jam because I don't like strawberries, but that's the only jam I have in my place. <laughs> so I have to like just try and get the jelly. This is a weird moment between you and me, my beautiful friends, where I'm just telling you that I'm a mess right now, I think. I think I've discovered that I'm a little bit of a mess right now. <laughs> Getting paralyzed on the couch and being unable to get out of that like, I don't know, I don't even know what to call it. It's like this little weird place that I settle into and I'm just like, man, I could be in bed right now. I could be doing this, I could be doing that. I could be doing so many different things right now. I could have gone grocery shopping today, but instead I read the entirety of Empire of Exiles and it was fucking fantastic, I gave it five stars. Anyways, I got, I made myself get up. I made myself get a snack. I'm a midnight or 2 a.m. snack girly. I convinced myself with a snack to get up off of my couch. And now I'm going to bed. <laughs> Hello friends, that was such a weird opening to this clip, but we're all friends here, we all know. Things are a little weird and kooky at 2 a.m., aren't they? Oh, God. All right, but yes. Empire of Exiles, my beautiful friends. What a book. Okay, let me just go deposit this in my bedroom, and we will chat. Oh, I forgot I left my window open in here. Oh, it's nice and chilly in here. 2 a.m. Finished a five-star book today. Yeah, it was five stars. I did the, the Burla Journal spread for it, too. All in one sitting. And what's even better about this one is that I forgot. It's part of my like 24 books in 2024 bingo board spread, which is so exciting. Read another one off the bat because I forgot that was a thing. <laughs> but yeah, okay, this fucking fantastic. And then I thought that the sequel's out, it's not. And it's coming out April 30th. And I'm both simultaneously so happy that it is so soon and so mad that it's not already out because I would be going to get it tomorrow from the bookstore. I want the sequel so bad because this is fucking amazing okay i can't even describe this plot in a concise way i've tried when i was doing my like page and my bullet journal i was trying to shrink this plot down to like a sentence or two so that i could write it in my bullet journal as like a brief summary i couldn't even do that so there's just no brief summary on that page it's all just my thoughts because it's all just me screaming <laughs> about how much I love this book. So, okay, let me see if I can try to do this. We have a cast of characters, big cast of characters, but the four main ones, we have Quill, who is an apprentice scribe, Vinnie, who is a one of the archivists at this our big magical imperial archives. And we also have the experienced archivist who like runs the place, Amadea, who is amazing. I fucking love her. And then we also have an investigator named, fuck if I know, Richia? I think it's Richia? In my head, I kept replacing Rich. Yeah, it's Richia. <laughs> it's Richia. <laughs> I kept rep replacing it with Riviera <laughs> for no reason at all. So we have those four and then a bunch of other people around them. At the beginning of this, Quill, who is the scribe, comes to the archives thinking that he's there only for like a very simple mission to just submit a request for these different artifacts to be pulled out for this very intense high up family like one of the noble families right like the ruling family if you will the Karatsis. so throughout this novel there are interspersed like what i thought were what i thought originally it was just a prologue but it's like interspersed throughout like it's like different like interludes i guess they should be called we have this conversation between Rodolfo, this Duke of Carazzi, this Duke Duke Carazzi, who ran and like was the head of this revolution rebellion coup attempt that failed like 25, 20 odd years ago, 23 years ago, my apologies, <laughs> between him and his brother. And they're in, it's like Duke Rodolfo or Duke Carazzi, Rodolfo has been in this place sequestered for five days because he's basically on death row. Like he's been, he's waiting to be hanged. And his brother comes and visits him to like one last attempt to see if he'll like confess to things and like tell him information on these people that he's like been running this uh, revolution with and is the girl that he has really the lost child of the throne because there's a lot of like political stuff like that that's going on. Anyway, so that's like part of it. Quill, 23 years later, takes this request for an for, for a bunch of artifacts from the Karazzi family to the Imperial Archives. And the Imperial Archives are a fantastic place where I want to go visit because it sounds so cool. Because in these archives, we have a bunch of archivists and we have a bunch of like specialists in 
each one of the kind of magical branches. And there's different like abilities that each one of them has. There's like not a pronunciation guide, but there's a list of people at the front, which is very helpful because there's a lot of characters in here. So we have Tunic, who is a bone specialist. We have Bijan, who is who is a corundum specialist, who's married to another specialist, Stavio, who's one of the two bronze specialists. So I don't exactly know what Bijan does because it's not it's not specified. Bijan's a very like low-key member. But Stavio and another another person named Zoifia are bronze specialists. So they have like an affinity to bronze and they can like melt it and it can like pull into them. And they know the, it's just the most fascinating magic system. What we learn more about is Yini because she has an ink affinity. She can feel the inks around her, which is the cool, it's so cool. <laughs> like, but the archivists themselves, these these specialists are like constantly living on the edge of a complete and mental breakdown and a loss of themselves to these specialties that they have and there's an interesting system that i don't think we got a, like a good look at in here because like we got a good look at like one of the moments of it which is when the when bronze was in alignment and it's like the certain times of the of the cycle of something i can't quite like i can't tell you exactly what it is because i don't know it's a cycle of something where the affinities where anyone with a bronze affinity if it's in alignment they have to be super careful about what they do because if they come too close into contact with bronze they could be sent into a spiral is what they call it and then they could just like totally entomb themselves in metal and just like lose themselves entirely so that's like a constant threat in here is these specialists in their field constantly being on the edge of a panic attack like mental breakdown loss of themselves i actually read a little bit of the author's note in the back or the acknowledgements and it says here there are three places this book began first in the parking lot of my therapist's office pondering a magic system that felt like an anxiety disorder and i was like that's exactly what this magic system feels like and it's not the only depiction of anxiety in here actually this is has the, some of the best depiction of anxiety i have ever seen in the character amadea who doesn't have magic amadea just is extremely traumatized <laughs> from events in her past and she is constantly doing these grounding exercises where like if she's being overwhelmed by memories or something happening in a situation she's grounding herself by like calling out physical items in the room just in her mind as she's having conversations with people it is one of the best depictions of anxiety like amadea i have never seen a character like her I love her to pieces. Back to my original plot description. This is, see, I can't, I can't do this in a tight, concise way. Quill brings the request to the archives. Yes, meets all the archivists. Then he and his like superior, who like didn't come in with him, his superior's not there. Quill goes back to where they're like staying because they're not actually from this town. They're from a different town. He goes back. He like talks to some people on the road. He's a super sweet boy. He's just like a lovely little nugget right he knocks on the door very polite no one answers no one lets him in and then he just hears screams which is the most terrifying thing he walks in on his buddy his friend that he came there with having murdered a bunch of people or attacked a bunch of people just surrounded by blood then his friend takes a look at him says some of the most out-of-pocket randomest sentence ever that like doesn't mean anything to quill and then offs himself. And so this kicks off a murder mystery type of thing because like they know who killed these people and who attacked these people because he committed suicide right after that. But Quill is like, that's not my friend. Something is wrong with my friend. My friend would never do that. That's like not, that is just not the thing, right? And so it kicks off this whole investigation because he then goes back to the archives because he that's weirdly like the only place he feels safe because Amadea, he like when he's there, he witnesses Amadea calming Zoifia down from almost becoming near a spiral because so he sees how well Amadea handles a crisis. And so he's like, that's the only place I can think of. So I'm gonna go stay at the archives. So he does. And it kicks off this like murder investigation, figuring out all this stuff and <laughs> It like just unspools from there because it's like oh my god I've even with Quill being the main witness to the murder 
with no one in power believing his story because all the other witnesses to this murder have given an account to the investigator that is very similar, the same beats of the story. And the investigator's like, that's weird. Every single person's given me the same beats. Like, it's like they've rehearsed it, right? And so it's this like, it's slow churning, like unveiling of this mystery. He and his archive new friends and the investigator are like just trapped in figuring out the truth of this. And it not only unveils like the truth of what was really happening there, but like this long con from these people, like it just, unveils so much and there's so much cool world building in here because it's not just humans like there's different kinds of beings in here that are just naturally stitched into the fabric of the world and there's changelings and lore with that and then there's a wall called the salt wall that was built in between this tiny little section of the continent called Similian or Sem Similian I guess and the rest of the world, like I'm not even kidding you, Samilla is this tiny little spot here. <laughs> this is Samilla. And then there's the rest of the continent and they've built themselves a wall to like stop the threat of these changelings like coming in and taking over. And it's such fascinating lore. I am obsessed. Like it immediately, immediately, I just wanted to reread this. It was perfectly written perfectly paced the intrigue was so high and it might have all been because the audiobook narrator was just chef's kiss but like when you get that perfect combination of a fantastic audiobook narrator and a fantastic fucking story it was a fantastic day i had a great time i became one with my couch and I read this entire thing in six hours today, which isn't as fast as I can usually read a, on, it's like a 378 page fantasy book. It's not as fast as I can usually read a book this size. I can usually power them out. I could have done this in three hours if I had really tried, but I was like savoring it. And there was a lot of like really intricate political machinations and movements and the way that this was weaved, the way that the mystery was weaved in with the characters and like the slow unveiling of all these characters who have secrets and backstory and stuff like that and then like weaving in the magic system as being like also this other thing we have to worry about and then also the world building coming in with that and then the history and the politics it was expertly done i need to read everything that aaron m evans has written because i fucking loved this book so much if this is becoming a trend where i like start a month with a five star book i'm not gonna be mad at it but also i need the rest of the books that i read this month to be bangers too anyways this was a banger and rest assured i'm gonna be getting relics of ruin which is the next one on april 30th because i need my hand i need it i need it what a fascinating not even because like this didn't end on like a cliffhanger or anything it's just the fact that this moved with such an intensity and just kept me so gripped the entire time and there's so many unanswered questions at the end of this even though some of the, like the main threats that were brought up in this book were solved and were dealt with i guess there were so many unanswered questions and like this tantalizing tease of what the like what the world could be oh my god and the amount of like this i don't know if you saw in that b-roll clip with like the, the one of the time lapse clips i it lit one moment my jaw literally dropped i'm not even kidding you it was not faked it was not i just my jaw was like oh my god just couldn't believe what happened and you guys know how rare that is because as someone who has studied plot structure <laughs> as an author myself it's very hard to surprise me in a book because i see what authors do i see the way they're setting things up and it like hasn't really taken away the joy of reading for me but like sometimes i'm a little disappointed that i know things and I see things <laughs> and other people, like normal readers just don't, do, just don't, you know? But this surprised me in the best way. Mm. Loved this book. Everybody needs to read it. Not enough people are talking about this. Please read it. It has some of the cool, like the most unique worlds I have ever come across and the most unique lore I have ever come across. And the magic being built around an anxiety disorder, like, <laughs> It's so real. And oh my god, the amount of I'm fines in here when you're not fine, too real. <laughs> I've been talking for 23 minutes, my timer says, so I'm gonna leave it here. 
enjoy the rest of this but yes pick this up if you take one recommendation from me make it the empire of exiles i gotta also say that book just made me just genuinely just feel so inspired to work on sage's story and so i actually wrote a little prologue today just like i got so inspired by this like scene that popped in my head that i wrote a quick prologue which was fun i'm gonna immediately change it because then i had a shower at like 11 30 at night when i was like i just want to relax I had a shower and i was like thinking in the shower I was like no I gotta do this with the character so I think I want to start kind of dabbling in Sage's story I keep saying that in all these vlogs just being like what if I what if I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna let myself dabble in that just because the high fantasy level of this made me so excited to write my own high fantasy again like the, the cozy fantasies that I write are high fantasy but like romance books blanketed in high fantasy I'm talking like true high fantasy you know the genre the subgenre of high epic fantasy i want to get back there good night friends i'll see you tomorrow <laughs>so tired i did not realize what time it was why because i just got sucked down a rabbit hole of sage story <laughs> i've been listening to a podcast called writing about dragons and shit <laughs> that's run by like b dave and aaron m evans who is the author that i read this weekend this one is when i was looking her up and wanted i found her website and realized that she's part of a podcast that i had to go listen and i was listening to it today and i got so hooked on it and it started like really inspiring me and just in the way of like making my brain start to spark and want to work i ended up doing a very very basic like what's going to be the trajectory of the trilogy kind of a thing and like book one is discovering a mystery book two is trying to find a way to take the the, the baddie down and then book three is like trying to save everything in culmination right so it's just one of those things i was trying to figure out and then for i flipped a page and i was like i'm gonna write a brief summary about each book and then i did a brief summary about book one and then started book two but i don't know enough about book two to actually do like a summary of it and like the brief summary is like very back of book for this one after finishing up a rather messy and rather smelly job like you know that kind of a narration style that i was just doing in my head and then because i don't know how to actually write a connected series i have never done that before i started like looking up different like tiktoks and stuff just see if anyone had any like tips or tricks or anything that would like just sparkle something in my brain because i think what i'm going to be doing mostly is like building it off of the three act structure the series because it's going to be three books so each book is going to be like an act kind of a thing and then within each act it's going to be like a full three act structure you know then i came across one by Namana Forna and it was like things that she wished she knew when she was writing her series and she was like do a character map <laughs> and then I was like trying to figure out if I could find someone on the internet who had done a character map already because there's a lot of like book excel sheets on the internet that you can get on Etsy and stuff like tracking spreadsheets and stuff that you can find on the internet you can buy and i was like i wonder if anyone has anything like that for like characters specifically like a character map if anyone has already laid one out turns out that if you write in character map you get not what i was looking for <laughs> because it's not like i want to map out the individual characters what i want this character map for is kind of like i guess like a character bible or a series bible where 
I keep track of all of them, all of their like super basic info. And then in another sheet, keep track of their relationships to one another because that's going to be important. And not only their relationships to one another in a very like outward way, like friend or lover or wife or husband or whatever. Also just say, oh, I'm going to walk away from that as I fill up my Brita filter. Just to like, what does each person think of the other person? Kind of. <laughs> and that started me down a rabbit hole of not only writing down all my characters' names from that I know that, that'll be in Sage's story, and then also coming up with my bad guy's name, and then coming up with a bunch of other names for pirates that are on this island because it's piratey. That was my evening. And then I started doing like filling in the actual like relationship sheet. Whoa. He's leaking. He's leaking everywhere. Alright, that fixed it. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't pay attention to things. Your Brita filter overflows. <laughs> yeah, so I was actually filling in like, like for example, I was filling in Ku. If you've read the second story, you've met him already. I was filling in Ku's opinion on the other members of their party that they're together with. Because that'll be fun, and because we didn't really get like a whole lot of like their interpersonal dynamics in a second story when we actually met the crew. It was more of a like, how does Ku think of Drift? Or what does Ku think of Drift? And Ku, for example, thinks that Drift is a little suspicious because he doesn't have any information on Drift. And Ku is my information little man because Ku is the healer of the party. And he has a way of just like, because he's seen each one of the members of the party at their worst, he has a way of like leeching information from them. So he has like a secret on each one of the people of his party, except for Drift, because Drift is surprisingly closed off. And even though Drift is very like rambunctious and rowdy and chaotic, they just keep their secrets real close to their chest. Ku's a little suspicious of them. So it's, it was a fun little exercise to start thinking about the dynamics and stuff and like also what could each of them have hidden in their backstory and stuff like that anyways that was my evening and that's why it's 2 a.m because i got so sucked down that little journey <laughs> yeah i just got so into it so i did work on sage's story today which is fantastic feels good to be in that one i think it's because i read an empire of exile yesterday <laughs> and also because i've been listening to the podcast it just feels like my brain is in inspired mode so i'm gonna coast with that coast with that feeling and the kind of inspired that like i don't necessarily i don't really want to work on book three or my book three with mary and zanvi at the moment it's more of a i want to work on something high high fantasy as i explained <laughs> yesterday yes yeah, so that was my evening after i got home from mama dance i was listening to that podcast and then i just kept listening to it now i'm four episodes in <laughs> So it's a good podcast. Highly recommend writing about dragons and shit. Check it out. I think they have wonderful, interesting ideas about storytelling, especially if you're in a speculative genre like sci-fi and fantasy. Yeah, today I read the entirety of The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. I read it earlier in three hours and like 15 minutes. I read this entire thing. It was very speedy. I really didn't know what to expect going in, but all I had known about this was that it was a little tropey, a little catering to the masses, but also very fun and I was like let's go I don't know it is very fun but the content itself is not fun trigger warning for murder <laughs> gaslighting and abuse and mental abuse and physical abuse sort of no maybe just a lot of really intense stuff so if you look at the trigger warnings if you're interested in this but like overall it was kind of fun <laughs> It was kind of fun. So I did enjoy this. I wasn't expecting it to be in first person. I think that's what really threw me off at the beginning when I was listening to it or when I started reading and I was like, first person, what? what, 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 what? And I gotta say, like, a lot of this, I was just immediately like, oh God, oh God, the secondhand, like, it's not even secondhand embarrassment. It's just like the secondhand, like, oh no. <laughs> just from knowing like wh how, th where things were gonna go and knowing about it. So <laughs> Like knowing like the trajectory of some of the character interactions, I was like, here we go. But then it pulled one over on me and like it, it did something in part two. And I was just like, wait, what? And I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. And then seeing the unfolding of that 
there were parts in this that I didn't that I felt were a little bit slow and repetitive and like parts where I wish it would kind of speed up a little bit but overall definitely fun I mean I read it in three hours so like I don't know how much more speedy I wanted it to be but just in like plot wise <laughs> so this is about Millie and Millie at the beginning of this is so down on her luck she's living in her car she cannot get a job she's just been released from prison and where she's been for the last decade since she was a teenager she's like trying to adjust to life but she doesn't have any money she doesn't have a place like she's literally living out of her car all this kind of stuff so she goes to this interview for a live-in housekeeper job that she thinks she's not gonna get because she is so like of a lower class standard than this house that she goes to because this house is like beautiful and powerful and like, you know, richy rich, right? The woman who meets her, Nina, Nina Winchester is like beautiful and dressed in white and she's like a 30 year old mom and like all this kind of stuff. So she gets hired by the Winchesters uh, to be the live-in housekeeper. Like immediately, Millie is so suspicious of like everything and everyone to a point of like, okay, I get it. Like the author was like laying it on really thick. Millie goes, she moves in, she moves into the attic, which is a very, very small room with like a single cot and like a mini fridge with like three bottles of water in it. And it's very starkly different from the rest of the house. But like Millie's like, this is great. I've been sleeping in my car. I cannot wait to sleep with my legs extended on a bed. Like this is the best. And then she notices that the lock for the attic is on the outside of the door, not on the inside. And then things start getting weird. And like the the family that she's staying with is weird. <laughs> it says in the back, I try to ignore how Nina makes a mess just to watch me clean it up, how she tells strange lies about her own daughter and how her husband Andrew seems more broken every day. But as I look into Andrew's handsome brown eyes, so full of pain, it's hard not to imagine what it would be like to live Nina's life. The walk-in closet, the fancy car, the perfect husband, et cetera, et cetera. But I re like, it's, it's like, I reassure myself, the Winchesters don't know who I really am. They don't know what I'm capable of. And it's, it's this very interesting narrative of like weaving together kind of this, oh, like what was she incarcerated for, for 10 years? And why is she so worried that if they do like a record check that she's gonna be fired? And also what the hell is going on with Nina? Because Nina seems so unhinged, <laughs> like is saying shit out of her own ass and her daughter's the worst and Andrew's like this dreamboat. And it's this very, it's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. And like the way that this wraps up and like the reveals in it and how like it all comes together at the end i don't know it was kind of kooky but it was also just the perfect amount of fun that i kind of want to read the next one like it didn't give me finley donovan vibes but it gave me a little bit of finley donovan vibes i don't know how to like finley donovan is such a fun it's like a rom-com crime book right like that one is fun and it's meant to be fun it's meant to be absurd this is like a mystery thriller that I found very fun to read. Like it wasn't like a super dark, brutal slasher thriller, you know? I found it like leaning more on like the cozy mystery side, even though it was like cozy thriller. <laughs> Is that a new term that I can coin? Like a cozy thriller? But yeah, so I liked the way this ended and it did make me want to read the next one, but I couldn't find the audiobook for the next one. So I'll have to keep my eyes open for that because I think it could be kind of fun to see where it goes from here. Have any of you read this? What did you think? As someone who doesn't frequent the thriller or mystery genre very often, but has and knows a lot of the ins and outs of the genre and that usually finds them a little ridiculous. And when you get to the 75% mark, a lot of the spook and amazing factor goes away and it gets like a really low rating because of that. Because <laughs> the, because I often want books to like lean into the spook and to make it paranormal. Excuse me, I don't know what the hell just happened to my voice. I want, I want a lot of thriller books to like go where they're not willing to go and they just don't <laughs> because that's not the genre. Although I did read one book, I think it was a Riley Sager that went the way that I've been wanting a lot of his books to go and it really disappointed me. So uh, maybe I just don't know what I want with thrillers. I enjoyed this. Like, it, is it a good book objectively? No. Subjectively though, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was kind of fun. Anyways, I gave it three and a half stars. Like it's a really, really solid read. And so far in April, the three books that I have read have all been very solid reads. And I'm just so happy about it. <laughs> An interesting, productive day. And I think that it was great. I mean, I read two books this weekend, so a good solid weekend. I think I'm gonna take a day off soon. I'm gonna see when I can. From work, I mean. And because I can feel, <laughs> I'm just tired. <laughs> 
I'm just really fucking tired. And it's not like a physical exhaustion. It is a mental exhaustion. So we'll see. Anyways, friends, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome to the end of the vlog. Happy Monday. I'm here. My first two kids weren't coming tonight, so I had an extra chunk of time between work and leaving for work. So I've decided to edit some of this vlog. And I figured why not actually finish this vlog when it's daylight out still? <laughs> because so many clips of this vlog were at 2 a.m. <laughs> and I didn't want it to happen again. So we're gonna chat. <laughs> so very happy with how this weekend went. I feel a little better than I did at the beginning of the weekend. But again, just a reminder to all my beautiful friends out there, all of you, take care of yourselves. Seriously, if you feel the burnout, oh, I haven't sit here in so long. Let's make this happen. The best lighting available. And also some of my Christmas lights hanging from my curtain rod that I don't know how to untangle and get down. Um, but we haven't been here in forever. But yeah, take care of yourselves, my friends. When you feel like you are on the edge of burnout, take the rest you need. You know, I'm trying to tell myself that <laughs> because I think even though I feel like my writing experiment and challenge at the end of March with the first draft of Airmount Book 3 went really well and I felt like I just didn't do a lot of burnout even though I wrote 52,000 words in 18 days. I felt like I was okay. I was in like a mentally good space to have done that. But it, even though it wasn't nearly as detrimental as my previous writing challenges have been, it still affected me. And I just need to remind myself that it's okay that it affected me. It's not normal to write 52,000 words in 18 days. It is not a sustainable thing to do. <laughs> So it's okay that my brain needs a break and it's okay that I was feeling also tremendously just done with work because work got really busy. My regular 40 hour work week job, my regular full time job got really crazy in March and it's kind of coming to the end of that. So I think I'm just feeling all of it all at once. And I'm going to take my <laughs> this week, I'm going to look and see if I can take a day off next week or the week after just so I have that day for myself coming up, whether that's a Monday or a Friday kind of a thing, just so I have a day to myself, even if it's like in the middle of the week, I think that would be kind of nice to do. Take the time you need, my friends, take care of yourselves. It feels springy outside and I feel like a lot of people are talking about how they're in just a weird rut right now. And I'm simultaneously kind of like fighting the rut. <laughs> And also like in the moment of like, wow, it's almost like it's spring now, like weather feels nice now. Like I'm gonna be going out in sandals today. Prime, even though it's gloomy. <laughs> I'm just so excited to not have to wear socks and winter boots anymore. So I'm I'm excited about that. But it's it's spring is an interesting time. And I think this is the first time that I felt like a genuine level of like kind of burnout or like not not full burnout, but like really close to or getting close to, not necessarily really close to. Spring is an interesting time for that to happen because usually that happens in the fall for me. <laughs> so hopefully I haven't overdone it in the past little bit. But I think for the rest of April, I'm just going to take it easy. And then May is when we're going to pick up Airmount Book 3 again. Because I still haven't heard anything back from the writing grants. So I'm just going to wait until I hear back from them to like actually start that project. So who's to say how that will go? But anyway, so this weekend I did some reading, some heckin' reading. Read two fairly good books. And also did some work on Sage of Story, the trilogy, which I'm so excited about and I keep thinking about and I just want to like dig into the nitty gritty of this story. And I was, I just want to keep listening to all these podcasts because I'm feeling inspired too. Like it's such a weird mood that I'm in. Like I'm mentally exhausted and done, need a break, and yet I'm very inspired <laughs> to do all the creative things. So who knows what kind of a weird mood I'm in. But yes, this weekend I read my first five star of April, which is Empire of Exiles by Aaron M. Evans. I can't stop thinking about this book. Like I want to reread it. <laughs> I just want to be back in this world and I want to reread it. I want to get this story all over again now that I know this story. I want to like inspect it, you know? I, and I, yet I can't because I have so many other books to read. <laughs> it's like just so many other books as you can see in piles, my library books around me, like so many other books to read. I don't have time to reread this, but I really want to. Hopefully April 30th comes along really quickly and I can read Relics of Ruin and that'll like satiate the reread feeling. Today I also got approved for the sequels, the arcs from NetGalley. I got approved two Titan books. I got approved for Black Tide Sun, which is my most anticipated book of this year, and also The Unrelenting Sky, which is the second book in the Critica Rao trilogy. And I woke up to that and I screamed. <laughs> I was so excited! So excited to get that 
that announced. I just, oh my god. So I'm gonna have to get over my issue of reading ebooks and like read those because I'm so excited. But I think the Black Tide Sun one means that I need to reread Dark Water Daughter beforehand. So I might do that. <laughs> I might do that as well. But anyways, yes. So I read Empire of Exiles. I'm gonna be just hankering for the sequel. I'm so excited. And I also read The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. I gave Empire of Exiles five stars and Frida McFadden's got three and a half stars. It's not a fantastic book, but I had a good time reading it. It went really quickly and I think it was fun, <laughs> even though the content is not very fun. I think it was definitely a good, easy thriller mystery read. And I can tell why it's getting all the hype that it is and is being read by so many people because I think it's a very accessible mystery thriller for the masses, you know? And I am part of the masses, so I did enjoy this. But yes, have you read either of these books? Let me know down below. And if you have not, please pick this up. I'm gonna make everyone read this book because it is phenomenal. If you are a fantasy reader, read this. That is the, that is the caveat of today. If you take any of my recommendations ever, Empire of Exiles, my friends. Anyways, my beautiful friends, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna go edit a little bit more of this video to see in the next 10-ish minutes before then I do have to leave to go to piano and teach my nuggets. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I will catch you in another video very soon. Stay kind and keep on reading.